Hey everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Reviews. I'm Max, and this is the 2018 Nissan Leaf S. Why am I looking at a used electric car? Well, that's because this is part three of our cheap used EV series, where we're gonna buy a sub $25,000 used electric car in an attempt to basically uh, see what you can get with that tax credit. Because of course, in 2023, you're gonna be able to claim up to $4,000 off of buying a used car as long as it's at a dealer and at least two years old and has a seven kilowatt hour battery or bigger. So what are we looking at here? Well, 2018 Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf is one of the longest running electric vehicles in the industry up there with Tesla Model S. I think the first model year was 2011, but 2018 was a big year because they upgraded it to a second generation platform. So it had a significantly bigger battery. It jumped up from 30 kilowatt hours to 40. Uh, the original very first Leafs actually had 24 kilowatt hours. So you get significantly more range here, 150 miles as standard per EPA testing. Not quite up there with Bolt or Model 3 or you know some of the very longest range electric vehicles, but still in my opinion, really solid. You also got um, a more powerful motor setup. So this is still a front wheel drive hatchback, but they gave it a more powerful inverter and electrical system. So out of a very similar motor, they were able to ring more power. This car has 147 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque, kind of like the Bolt. Those may not sound like big numbers, but keep in mind, it is a light hatchback. So it actually scoots pretty well. And I'll talk about that in the driving part of this video. But again, this is the 2018 one. So debut model year for that new generation. Uh, it is currently listed for somewhere around $19,000, so fairly decent price. However, however, this is a high mileage example. And we're uh, looking at this one today courtesy of Corwin Toyota of Boulder. Thank you guys for letting us look at your car. So not a Nissan dealer, but they just got a hold of this. And uh, thank you, by the way, to Hunter from that dealership. He's been super awesome to work with. Uh, when I got it, it was like near full charge. So they did a great job of that, you know, even though it's not a brand name vehicle. Uh, they've you know, been great to work with. But we're looking at this today because it's a significantly improved LEAF, right? That first generation one, you can find for well under what this goes for. But the generation two, you know, this new LEAF in 2018 onwards, they improved a lot. However, this is the S trim, and I'll talk about later in a buyer's guide part of this video what that means, because there are three trim levels on LEAF. There's S, SV, and SL. So I'll talk about which one to buy, what they're going for, look at the used market for that later on in this video. But I just wanna give a quick walk around and impression of the vehicle. It is a four-door hatchback. Like I said, front wheel drive with that single motor, very similar to the last LEAF, but just generating more power because it had an upgraded electrical system. The big story here, aside from that bigger battery, is so it's 40 kilowatt hours. That might sound great, right? 150 miles of range standard. Well, it's still an air-cooled battery. And this has been the Achilles heel of the LEAF, especially in a cold climate like Colorado, because battery degradation is a thing. And we're gonna look at in the driving section of this video what the battery degradation is. Currently, I can tell you, based off the estimated range, it seems like this battery has degraded a little bit. You're not getting that 150 miles of range you were supposed to from the factory. Uh, but, you know, such is the way with LEAF. If you live in a cold climate, this passively air-cooled battery system just can't keep up with liquid-cooled batteries like you would get in a Chevy Bolt, a Tesla Model 3, uh, even a Fiat 500e, lots of other EVs that did use more sophisticated battery thermal management systems. Sounds super nerdy, but what that relates to is basically, you look at a used EV like this, this one with 60,000 miles on it, you've got to ask yourself, how much is that battery degraded? How much range are you losing as a result? But if I open up this leaf, it's a hatchback, which is great. So I love hatchbacks because you get a lot of practicality. The leaf is no exception. They did a really good job of giving you a plenty full amount of space in the trunk. There are 60, 40 rear folding seats as standard. Uh, I think this has more space than the bolt. Uh, so really good job in terms of the internal cabin space with one exception. So if I open up here, you can see there's a significant uh, basically protrusion into the uh, second row. Uh, it almost looks like a drive shaft tunnel like you'd see on a gas car with all wheel drive or just for packaging reasons you'd see on several gas cars. The Chevy Bolt had a flat rear loading floor. Why does the Leaf have this despite being a ground up electric vehicle? What is that there for? Well, they did make an even bigger battery, the Nissan Leaf Plus with a 62 kilowatt hour pack. That offered even more range, over 200 miles, more competitive with the Bolt. But uh, we're not looking at that one today. Prices for those are still kind of up there and they're just not as common. 
And unfortunately, everyone with a standard battery like Lundis Leaf paid for the price of that bigger battery by sacrificing their cargo space for a battery that they didn't get, uh, such as the way when you share a platform uh, with several models of cars. But that's the Nissan Leaf. Um, you know, one of the few kind of ground up EVs we're looking at in this series alongside the Chevy Bolt. So you got to give respect to Nissan for being so early to the game in EVs in that respect. They really were quite ambitious. I think the second gen is a huge improvement personally in styling. It looks a lot better. I don't know what your thoughts are, but I'm really a big fan of it. But now I'm going to drive it in this lovely, basically freezing rain weather we have in Colorado today. I'm just going on the stock, low rolling resistance tires. These ones aren't actually stock. They look like they're uh, good years. That's not what came on this. And the rims have certainly seen some abuse, but this is a high mileage car. So 16 inch wheels, I believe they are still the stock wheels. We're just gonna drive it around, hopefully not get too much wheel spin, not get into any kind of accidents, but I'm just gonna basically give it a few launches, drive it, uh, give my impressions. You know, is it fun to drive? Is it relaxing? We'll talk about that. And then in the last part of this video, I'll do the buyer's guide where I talk about the trims, the used market here around the Colorado area and which one you should buy. So a quick note on the charging experience with the Leaf, you're gonna press this to open your front charging port, which I'm a big fan of. When you do that, there's a really helpful kind of LED display here, uh, which is awesome. So if I open up the car, basically you can see that this very intelligently placed front charging port uh, is now latched open for me to just lift up like that. And here's the downside of the Leaf. So good news is that we have a normal uh, connector for our level one and level two charging. But for DC fast charging, you have Chadmo. Oh man, let's talk about Chadmo. It's just not standard. It's a dying standard. Um, I said that twice, but it is not as common these days uh, for good reason. CCS has become the new standard. So you just, it's harder to find ports to plug this into. So that's kind of a disappointment. But in terms of placement, so convenient how it's just right here. I love that. That is how every charger and every EV should be in my opinion. Also, because people will inevitably ask, what's under the hood? Is there a frunk? Well, it's a Nissan Leaf. You might know this, but there is no frunk. So if I engage the hood opening mechanism, we actually get a very pedestrian uh, under hood experience. There's actually a prop rod. So I'm gonna have to hold this open here on camera. There's no hydraulics here. Um, just some electrical wiring equipment. Absolutely no storage to speak of. So you're gonna be relying on the cabin for that. By the way, that's where you put in your washer fluid. Okay, before I start the driving part, I just wanted to show the gauge cluster setup in this leaf really quickly. So this is a base leaf. So in terms of the screen here, we don't actually have Apple CarPlay or anything fancy. You do basically everything on the driver uh, instrument, instrument cluster right here. And if I focus here, you can basically see that I'm showing the battery capacity on the screen right now. It's telling me with this gray bar here that theoretically we have full battery capacity. Now, I don't believe that because I did some math here and this battery gauge says 61% and it's estimating 77 miles of range. So if I do some extrapolation, we're not getting to 150 miles of range uh, if we were at a fully charged battery. So there seems to have been some clear degradation here. It could also just be the conditions. Um, it is cold weather right now. And this leaf, we'll talk about this more in the buyer's guide part of the video, doesn't have a heat pump. We're using resistive heating from the battery. Now, that's super nerdy. I banged on and on about heat pumps in the series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically a heat pump is a much more efficient way for an EV to uh, draw hot air from the outdoors and put it into the cabin to kind of heat up you as a passenger, be more efficient. When you use resistive heating from the battery, not only are you um, being less efficient, but you're also uh, stra straining the battery more, frankly. So the more often you use a vehicle without a heat pump in a cold climate, the more, more wear you're gonna see on a battery, which is a concern in a high mileage car like this. Again, this one is running at like almost 62,000 miles. That's quite a lot. So. There's a lot of that to go around, and I think that's something to know. I'll talk in the buyer's guide about which Leafs did have a heat pump because that's gonna make a big difference in a cold climate. One thing I do like, however, is this is an S, but it has the all-weather package. So while there's no heat pump on this model, we do get, uh, blessedly, a heated steering wheel. Oh, that's so nice to see. And of course, we get uh, heated front seats. So that was some nice equipment that is optioned on this particular Leaf. Here I am in the Leaf taking off. Now I'm gonna be just in the normal driving mode, 
but I am with that E pedal, meaning I basically have uh, the one pedal driving feel uh, where I lift off the accelerator and I will coast to a stop. Now it's quite aggressive in this car. I think Nissan said at the time 0.2G is the maximum it can achieve and I believe them. Uh, you can easily come to a full stop with this. It does take some getting used to. It's honestly more aggressive than I felt even in some other EVs one pedal driving modes. So that is something kind of surprising. But good to see it's natural. I do like how also once it brings you to a stop, it will hold you. So if you're on a hill, it's actually gonna engage the mechanical brake to leave you stuck there. It's not just gonna let you kind of roll like you might in neutral. So as I pick up here, I'm gonna just floor it uh, and I accelerate to 60, believably in about eight seconds, which is what this vehicle is spec to. I think some people get it as low as like 7.8 seconds. Generally, it's around that eight second zone for these uh, 2018, you know, new generation Nissan Leafs without that plus upgraded battery pack. So that's good to see, faster acceleration than the original Leaf and faster acceleration noticeably than the e-golf that i was in before which is a compliance car it makes sense this has significantly more horsepower at 147 uh, for you kilowatt nerds out there that's 110 kilowatts versus on the e-golf um, less than that i believe somewhere like 90. so this is nice uh you know yes it weighs a little bit more than an e-golf because it has a bigger battery but Nissan, you know, they really did iterate this vehicle over time. And because it's the second generation, you can tell it's well sorted. The suspension's comfortable. Um, it is, you might be hearing some noise. That's because, well, it's a rainy day. The roads are wet. There's some tire noise to come from that, uh, just like in any car. But NVH is pretty well controlled in here. I would say this is on par with the Bolt, maybe a little bit better in that regard. In general, though, the interior, uh, at least on this S trim, is very cheap feeling. Uh, the Bolt was kind of plasticky, new age, futury. This is very pleather, uh, drab, kind of black, uh, at least in this interior, you know, your cloth seats, just like the Bolt. But I, I liked how the Bolt interior was really bright. This is a little bit more dour, at least as it's configured on this car. But in terms of practicality, comfort, I think really nice. You could compare this really conceivably to a Nissan Versa because that's what it shares a lot of DNA with design-wise. Uh, and in the interior materials and quality, um, it also does. So take that as you will with Nissan. Now you do get, in terms of practicality, a USB-A port and an aux in so, and Bluetooth. So even though this model doesn't have CarPlay, uh, you could easily you know, connect your phone that way. So at least there's that. There's also a 12 volt cigarette lighter as you would expect. So even though this was a 2018 model year, no options for USB-C in here, a little bit disappointing on that front. It's just quicker than the e-golf, which is a lot, very confidence inspiring. I can be at 50 miles an hour, and if I need to speed up more, I actually conceivably can, which an e-golf sometimes felt like it could be dangerously slow. Uh, so I really am appreciating that in here. It's much more like the Bolt in that regard. Not quite as quick as the Bolt, but um, quick enough, certainly, for an around town car, and even, I would say, highway speeds. Now I have to talk about fast charging in this car. Uh, so this car is an S model, but it does have the charging package, meaning it does have DC fast charging, but it's not like what you might think or the DC fast charging that we saw on the Bolt and the Golf and almost every other EV on the road now. Uh, most fast chargers use the CCS connector nowadays, which has basically uh, just become the new standard aside from Tesla. Well, Nissan was really invested in Chatamo, which is this uh, more standard that was more common in Japan. And at one point we thought we might see wide adoption in the US. Uh, this and I think some Mitsubishi vehicles use Chatamo. Uh, but frankly, Chatamo just, well, never took off. It's kind of dying out right now. If you go to an Electrify America or ChargePoint station, you're gonna see like maybe one Chatamo port there, uh, which or one Chatamo plug, meaning like if there's several Nissan Leaf owners at the New Year stations, you might be out of luck because you can't use any of the CCS. So you can uh, conceivably get up to 50 kilowatt charging right in this, which makes it comparable to the Bolt in that regard. Not a fast DC fast charger, but this is just what cheap EVs were at the time. That said, you can't get a lot of consecutive DC fast charging. Let's say you're on a road trip and you need, you need to conceivably charge every few hours. Well, you're only really gonna get like one fast DC fast charge a day, especially if you have any kind of rem remotely warm climate. That just because the battery will be too hot and Nissan was very aggressive with the battery thermal management because they need it to be. It's an air-cooled passive battery. There's no fancy liquid cooling to speak of. So what that nerdy talk means is that you just can't conceivably use this in a high performance way. 
can't give it a lot of fast charging. So it's gonna slow down a lot after your first DC fast charge of the day, which for me would disqualify it for long road trips that are significantly above you know, double its range. Because let's say you can start near 100%, you can get one qu sort of quick DC fast charge, 30 minutes from 20 to 80%. Uh, well, then you're looking at significantly slower rates for the rest of the day because that battery is still so heated up. So that's a big disappointment. That said, in terms of charging, I do like how, because the Nissan Leaf is ground up, kind of like the Bolt, they put the charging port near the front. I think it's even better than the Bolt because the Bolt had it on the, um, still on the driver's side. The Leaf actually puts the charger right on the front on the nose of the vehicle. That I think is brilliant. Uh, they did it since the first Leaf and it's really nice. It's angled well and comfortably so you can easily plug that connector in. Uh, that's super well thought out. It's just a shame that Nissan still, even on a new Leaf, you could buy it like a new model year Leaf today, still is shipping them with that Chadmo port. So it's really, in my eye, the air-cooled battery pack and the Chadmo uh, charging instead of CCS that are holding this car back in terms of its competition. The Bolt is a liquid-cooled battery and uses CCS, which I think makes it much more kind of a, just frankly relevant to today's times. Chadmo is a dying standard in the US, I think everywhere globally, and um, air-cooled batteries have their limitations, especially in cold climates like Colorado. Now a note on traction, I want to be fair, this car is running aftermarket tires, it has a lot of mileage after all, but um, it's fine, you know, it's rainy, kind of cold conditions, but I'm not noticing a lot of wheel spin unless I intentionally act like a hooligan and give it the beans, uh, but generally it's well sorted and behaved, the traction control isn't atrocious like it can be in some kind of high torque EVs, so all of that is very nice to see. Uh, and yeah, generally relaxing drive around, like I said, good NVH. The suspension is very floaty and very soft. I think even more so than, um, noticeably more so I would say than the Golf, um, than that MQB platform that Volkswagen has. So this is very much just, you know, it's like a Nissan Versa. It's a very sedate, very kind of pedestrian hatchback. And if that's what you're looking for, that's great. Don't expect anything remotely sporty out of this. So here I am driving very slowly around town, making good use of that one pedal mode. I can just slow down very easily. Um, actually, I'm gonna, why don't I go to the legal speed limit on this road I'm at, right around 25 miles an hour, and now I'll just foot completely off. Uh, I slow down quite quickly there, and there you go. I am at zero and I'm stopped, and I'm gonna keep driving because this, um, Ford, uh, this Ford Escape or whatever's behind me, they're gonna freak out. So yeah, uh, it's a Leaf. It drives okay. It is fast enough, faster than some compliance cars, not as fast as a Bolt, obviously nowhere near as fast as a uh, Model 3 Performance or anything like that, but it's not priced like one. And in the used market, these have depreciated because frankly, they made a lot of them. The Nissan Leaf was one of the most popular EVs out because they just made it for so long. Uh, it has good brand recognition. Uh, this is kind of like with the Prius as a hybrids, the Leaf honestly is to electric vehicles. It's the boring safe option that you've probably heard of before. It's a household name. Uh, because because Nissan has just been at it for so long, they made so many of them, so that makes them easy to find used. But of course, there's the air-cooled Gremlin. You just have to look out for the ones. Like this high mileage one, it's behaving well, but based off the range estimation, I can tell that it's just not gonna give that full range, and who knows how much worse it could get. The more you drive it around in a cold climate like this, the more you're using that resistive heater uh, to heat the cabin, the more you're degrading that battery. And of course, you can't use the fancy DC fast charging very often and if you can even find a Chad Mo port. So some really, honestly, quite large compromises, but in terms of the numbers, the range, much better uh, as a situation in the e-golf. I think 150 miles is a step change difference from uh, what that e-golf was at, 83 miles. And that just with the standard 40 kilowatt hour battery. If you can find a 62 kilowatt hour pack, the Nissan Leaf Plus, uh, for a decent price, like under 25 grand for that used credit, well then I think you're off to the races because then you're getting well over 200 miles of range and that's great to see. And degradation is gonna, um, you know, not be as much of an issue because you have a bigger battery pack to begin with but it's still an air-cooled battery, so you have that issue. Now here I am passing a first-gen Leaf. Noticeably, I think this one is just much nicer looking. But anyhow, that's the driving section. Uh, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Drives well, you know, 
soft steering input, uh, soft kind of just suspension, surprisingly firm and aggressive regen. If you enable that e-pedal mode, you can turn it off though. So that's an option. Uh, but yeah, why don't I quickly switch it into eco, which will just kind of slow me down a bit. Eco is still a perfectly drivable mode. And when I do bump it into eco, my range estimation goes up uh, marginally, right? It was at 80 miles normally. If I put it in eco, it's at 84 miles. So I, I'm getting theoretically a little bit more range. But yeah, that is the Nissan Leaf 2018S. So now I'm gonna go to the buyer's guide. I'm gonna look and see if I can find other Nissan Leafs that are uh, either cheaper than this one or more well-equipped. And then I'm gonna tell you which trims, option packages, what you should be looking for in a Leaf. So stay tuned for that. Okay, on to the buyer's guide part of the video. I have Auto Tempest pulled up on my phone. It's basically a way of searching a bunch of uh, used car sites at once to find what you need. So we're gonna put in Nissan Leaf uh, within 500 miles of where we are. Uh, and then we're gonna have, of course, that maximum price of $25,000. And we're gonna have minimum model year of 2018 because that's this new generation of Leaf. And frankly, it has a lot of upgrades. It's a much nicer car, looks a lot nicer. So what we're seeing is this one we're driving right now, which is just under 20 grand. So from Corwin Toyota. Uh, then we have an SV trim actually. So that's still under 25 grand, but it is a lot more expensive. It's five grand more expensive almost. It's in Utah and it has a, also a high amount of mileage, but it is SV, so it's option better. I'm gonna look at it because SV is just a luxury trim that added a few features basically um, for convenience. So there was a technology package and an all-weather package. This Leaf has the all-weather package, meaning it has a heated steering wheel, it has heated seats. However, because it is an S and not an SV, the all-weather package on this doesn't include the heat pump. If you're looking at 2018 and newer Leafs, to get the heat pump, you need either an SV or an SL trim with the all-weather package. So we're gonna see, does this one have that package? It is SV. Uh, it does have uh, the upgraded, uh, I believe, LED headlights. That's nice to see. This model is running halogen because it, because it is a Nissan Leaf S. Uh, keyless features are standard. You did notably get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, on the um, SV trim, which is nice. Uh, you get home link for your you know, garage door compatibility. It's not looking like other packages uh, are here. Charging, by the way, was standard. So this has the charging package, meaning it comes with a portable charge cable and has Chatamo for fast charging. Um, this was standard on SV and SL. So if you have an S and you remotely think you might ever go on a road trip, really do make sure it does have that uh, fast charge package. So I'm not seeing much info on that one. We're gonna go back to the main results here. Here's another one that's actually cheaper, even higher mileage though, unfortunately, as an SV. So looks like the prices for the SV 2018 and newer are still quite high up. And there has been a price drop on this one. But if I look, you know, uh, let's see, it's got, of course, those standard features. You did get um, automatic emergency braking as standard on all of the new Leafs. But um, if you wanted the super advanced driver assist, Nissan calls it Pro Pilot Assist, uh, you had to get the technology package uh, on the Nissan Leaf S v SL, which is the highest trim. So that package is really good. People have spoken very highly of Nissan's radar-based cruise control of their lane keep system. So Pro Pilot's great, but you're looking at a very expensive Leaf if you want to realistically see that because you need the SL and you need an SL that's been optioned with the technology package. So Pro Pilot Assist, as cool of a feature as it is, is just not as common on the used market. So I'm just scrolling here. Now this one is another S from Carvana with significantly less mileage on it, but it's also a lot more expensive. It also has the quick charge port, that being Chatmo, not CCS. Um, and honestly, given that we have this one, lovely one here from Corwin Toyota, I don't think I'd go with this Carvana option. So it seems like if you want an S, um, 17 to 19 grand is reasonable to expect for a 2018 generation two leaf. That said, if you want more standard equipment, you can of course go with a 2017 model a year or older, but frankly, I don't think you should um, be, unless you want to save a lot of money. Because if you want to realize the full four grand and you're willing to spend up to around 25 grand, you just get a much better car with newer Leafs. They're faster, uh, they look a lot nicer. Uh, there's just a lot of more uh, standard tech features too, frankly. 
Uh, so I think those are worth it. Now, the only caveat being, I keep harping on this, but that heat pump, it's hard to see. Uh, on the S, there's just no heat pump whatsoever. So if you know you need that heat pump, you're gonna be looking exclusively at SV or SL level trims. Let's just give this last one a look, see if I can find any info on it. Um, Carvana's site is delightful to navigate. Uh, okay, I'm trying to see vehicle details. So this one has navigation. Uh, they say there's a sunroof, but I'm not seeing one in the pictures. I don't believe they offered that here. Uh, standard backup camera, power seat controls, as you got on those higher end trims. Uh, but here we go, SV technology package. So sadly, no all weather package on this, indicating no heat pump. Uh, so possibly more battery degradation, especially as this is a higher mileage unit. However, a technology package does mean it has those LED headlights. Uh, it has some driver assist, even if it doesn't have ProPilot assist. So it looks like actually, despite being the technology package, this one doesn't have LED headlamps. You did need to get SL for that. So SV does not guarantee the headlamps. You could option the LED headlamps on SV, but to get those as standard, you needed to go to the highest trim level, that being SL. So if you don't care about a heat pump, if you live in a moderate climate, if you can find one without a ton of miles on it, you can get an S you will, I think, want that quick charge port because not only does it include Chadmo, but it did include that um, portable, uh, you know, just power cord for plugging in. That's an official Nissan part. Uh, that's a huge convenience. It was a $1,600 option package at the time. I would highly recommend looking for that. Uh, and then SV being if you want some of those technology upgrades, SL being if you want the nicest leaf. But unfortunately, it's looking like SL and 2018 or newer just is not compatible with uh, pricing being under 25 grand. The market may change, but as it stands, leafs are still quite expensive. Because of that brand cachet, people know what a leaf is. It's not as much of a hidden gem as something like, say, the Fiat 500e. Hmm, there's a little hint for maybe what we'll see in a future episode. But anyhow, that has been part three of the Cheap EV series. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad I got the chance to look at the Nissan Leaf, uh, kind of like the Bolt. We couldn't, you know, avoid this one. This is just such an obvious pick uh, in terms of having decent range, uh, being such a well-known option, being well outfitted with standard equipment, and being a ground-up electric vehicle. So next up in the series, we are going to be looking at uh, BMW i3, likely Fiat 500 and we'll see maybe something else. But stay tuned to that. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Max with Out of Spec Reviews.